Good morning, Captains. It's me, Tonic TZW, and this is World of Warships Legends. We're here in the Tier 7 Premium Japanese Destroyer Yadachi. Um, this was a campaign reward for me a long, long time ago. Um, it's since become available for Global XP. It is a very, very stealthy, very hard-hitting torpedo destroyer. It's been um, perhaps power crept a little bit with um, all the radar and long range sonar at uh, tier 8. Now where you can be matched with, it used to be a very punchy boat in legendary tier and you could pull some massive damage scores out of legendary tier. But now we've only got up tier, down tier to either 6 or 8, which has changed the game a little bit. But... Um, we're in trap, we're in domination mode, and for those that have been coming to the channel for a long time, I always try to educate. Um, it isn't all about look at how awesome my games are and how much damage and how many medals I've got. What I try to do is to convey a sense of what you need to do to win a game. Because it isn't all about medals, it isn't all about damage. This match is going to have a couple of medals and some damage. But first and foremost, I'm going to be playing for the win. Unlike the two battleships that spawned with me, who were in division, who decide in the first seconds of the game that rather than stay here and support me, that they are going to turn around and head for the opposite side of the map. That's awesome. Rule number one, play your cap. The reason you should play your capture point is because if you take a capture point, you can give yourself an advantage in the game by accruing points quicker without having to kill ships. You should always play for the win. Now, if you can't take the capture point, then the other thing that you should try to do is to prevent red team from taking the capture point. Now across on A cap, they are pushing that cap hard, which is good to see. Normally you end up with a bit of a stalemate across there and nobody wants to go near it. But blue team are pushing hard and they are getting in there. Red team have done what I normally like to do and they have pushed B cap because people don't like to play B cap for some reason. They say, oh, you're in the middle of the map, you're flank fired from both directions. Not always. Not always. That's all I'll say. B cap can be an easy steal. And if you can steal B cap quickly and easily and secure one of the outside caps, then you have got yourself an advantage. Now you'll see from my perceptive indicator where it's pointing and where I fired my torpedoes. That's because I have an absolute no doubt that there is a destroyer coming around the outside trying to flank and get a kill on a carrier. So what I'm doing is using the game mechanics and playing tactically to allow that destroyer to catch up with me. I am going away from him at quarter speed. I'm still keeping an eye on what's going around me. And what I'm doing is pinging the map and I've called the carrier for assistance, telling him that there is something behind me. And I'm just playing a screen for the carrier at the moment and running at quarter speed, what I'm allowing that destroyer to do, because he's going to be coming at full speed. There you go. He is going to run into me. He is going to be out detected and now he knows he's spotted, he is seen. I'm not located, which tells me that he is not running twist and track or perceptive. So we're going to put our torpedoes out across there. He's turning to avoid the run from the carrier. He's got me spotted now, so I'm going to put some fire on him. He's going to get a lucky shot in and knock out my engine, but we can afford to damage control that and a torpedo takes care of business. Now that he is out of the way, the risk to me from being bumped and gunned down by a destroyer has disappeared. Now the guys that are there pushing Charlie Cap 
Um, there is a Scone, there's a Champagne, there's an Indianapolis, and the carrier obviously also knows that I'm out here now, but I am quite away from the cap, so I am going to get myself back into action and push back in and see what I can do to either take this or prevent Red Team from taking it. Our Shan Horst has gone charging in there blindly. Um, well, was it blindly? No, he could pretty much see everything. The carrier's been over here. He's had some support. These two guys are still sailing away across the map. And um, yeah, what is their contribution to the game? I think between them, it's one kill. That's awesome. So yeah, don't abandon your cap. Don't be a plum like those two. Let me take a swig of my tea. Now I don't expect this Shan Horse to be surviving too long, not with a destroyer, a battleship and a cruiser on him. But I'm doing my best to get back here as quick as I can. Because this is about playing tactically. It is about thinking about how the game is developing. Now you'll see the blue team have got A cap, we've got B cap. What that does is it frees up the ships from that side of the map to start cutting back and coming this way. Now what that means for these guys on red team is there's only one way for them to go. And that is straight towards me. Now somebody on red team is actually going to call it quits and jack completely on the game when he realizes that there is no hope of coming away with a victory they are four ships down we are two ships down i'm still trying to stay undetected i'm trying to bring these guys into torpedo range and i'm looking at what's going on around me the two battleships that had sailed away have decided that they've you know, done with their little saga cruise around the map and that actually there's nothing left on that side of the map for them to shoot at. So they're going to now turn and come through B cap and at least try to get something out of the game. Champagne is pushing in. I know that the scone is still out there as well. So we're going to put those torpedoes out across the cap and open up a little bit more distance because I don't want to be bumped by the scone and then focused by the Indianapolis. But here we go. The carrier has forced the champagne into a turn and that has put him straight into the path of my torpedoes. So that is a second dev strike. The scone can see the torpedoes coming. We lose detection on him. The Indianapolis has obviously avoided the torpedoes as well. And now red team are on Charlie cap. But if you look at blue team, they've done the right thing. They've cut through Bravo. And now this Indianapolis has got a flank fire on them. The scorn is on the cap, but our carrier is going to come back in and get him spotted. So we're backing up slowly. We're looking for where this Indianapolis might go. There's the scone. He is spotted. We snap a shot at him. We then pop our smoke to drop detection. That was actually quite a good shot. We blind fire out of the smoke. And... Da, 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 da. There you go. He's gone. Indianapolis out there on his own now. My smoke screen's running. He knows that there is a Yadachi out in front of him. He could run me down, but you know something? He's going to wimp out. Now, I'm still being very cautious because he could come towards me. There's the Akatsuki. He is trying to push in on a cap and get some kills against all those guys that um, came through that way. It's not going to happen. But I'm looking at the guns. This Indianapolis has come to a dead stop. We get a fire on him. And now we're going to drop as we come around the island. We get a couple more hits. That fire is ticking. Now, at this moment in time, I'm thinking, well, he hasn't really taken any damage. So why is he not damage controlling that? And this is another trick that I use that I will share with you. 
when you get a ship spotted you can look at the bow wick you can look at the turrets you can see where they turn and look his turrets aren't looking anywhere near us that guy has quit the game so i decide i'm just going to keep piling the pressure on that is kill number four and because we controlled the capture points we didn't need to go hunting that last destroyer although potentially it could have been a crack and kill but there we go it was a very slowly played game but we still finish top of the board on just over 2400 base xp our two battleships managed to kill between them and uh probably got some um, sea miles on their card for how far they sailed across the map so you don't have to go guts of glory you should always play your capture point and if you can't take your cap at least try to stop red team from getting it so hopefully some lessons learned here take care of yourselves until next time goodbye